Hi everyone, hope you're doing well from whatever you're watching this channel, depending on your time zone. Now, there is a statement that was issued by Ndindi Nyoro, which has brought in a lot of discussion and debate about the Kenya Kwanza administration. Ndindi Nyoro, according to him, for Kenya to grow economically, his understanding or his position is that Kenya is not going to be changed by leaders in terms of elected leaders or politicians. Kenya is going to be changed by entrepreneurs, economically speaking. That is Nindi Nyoro's statement. Now, if you listen to that speech, it sounds like a smart con statement formula, uh, to, uh, uh, to formulate a narrative of defense. I wanted to listen to Nini Nyoro. Then from there, we are going to argue this case or statement and compare exactly what is happening in Kenya Kwanza as far as our economy is concerned. Listen to Nini Nyoro shortly. For Kenya to change, Kenya is not going to be changed by leaders. Kenya is going to be changed by entrepreneurs, economically speaking. The leader can only do policies. After policies, when I do a good policy about agriculture, I cannot go and do agriculture as a leader. I am doing it for the people. When we are doing policies around finance, around tech, it is not me as a leader who should benefit. The benefit is for the people. We must make this attractive. As leaders, our goal must not be to win an election. Our goal must be how to govern. And how to govern is from an MCSC to any other seat because it is through out of that decision making that governance helps. Winning an election is easy. You can do good speeches, you can promise anything. We must be focused on studying on what would change our countries and then domicile our ideologies. As politicians, according to Lili Nyoro, their goal should not be about winning election. It should be about governance. Is that what Kenya Kwanza is doing? Then how far can entrepreneurs change an economy? Those are the questions we want to try and answer. But before we go deep into that, just a quick request. For those who are watching and you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. To our returning subscribers, Amasha, thank you so much. And again, to all our viewers, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much and back to this discussion. Entrepreneurs are the ones to change the country economically. But how true is this statement? In a country whereby we have those in a position of governance do not provide a conducive environment for business to thrive. How true is that? Because in my thinking, entrepreneurs do not change uh, countries economically. They invest to make profit and then investment return on their capital. So it is incumbent on those in power or in government to formulate clear and people-driven policies which are implementable and sustainable in short term and long term. That is the truth. Because you can have many entrepreneurs in the country, but when you have poisonous administration, nothing can go on. Examples are numerous. When you have those in power coming up with policies with an intention to sabotage the economy at expense of their own interest, entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurs will focus on eh, their benefit, what they want, what they want to achieve. That is their goal. To grow themselves economically. But then, for a country's economy to grow, and you have, for example, the kind of leadership we are having today. 
When you come up with the fake fertilizer, you know, you bring in just soil and donkey's poo. You mixed, sell it to the farmer. At a cost, you're telling us it is subsidy. Then we buy that as farmers. We go and invest. We plant. Then we end up losing completely when it comes to harvesting. Whose mistake is that? So, the main person who can grow an economy it is the kind of policies that you bring about and the kind of governance you, you, you provide. So, when those who have been given such an opportunity turn into entrepreneurs like the ones you have today, we have today, who focus on what they get, they sabotage the economy. So entrepreneurs can be willing to do their business. We have agro-business. We have those who invest in that. Livestock, farming, or those who are planting. Then we have this kind of fertilizer that we have been given by Ken Nakwada administration. Lindy Nyoro. Tell us who has failed the entrepreneurs and Kenyans at large. It is the Kenya Kwanza administration. So, not by making this loud noise, you will change Kenya. Not by going on top of vehicle and addressing people in rally, you will change Kenya. It is by sitting down, making policies that are implementable and people-driven that's going to change the economy of Kenya and any other country. When you come to Western region and you sabotage sugarcane farmers with an intention to import sugar at a cheap price and then at the end of the day make a kill in profit. Then we have no sugar cane in Western. Then all the sugar cane factories are shut down. You've sabotaged the entire community economically at expense of you making profit. Importation business. So when we are not manufacturing, when we don't process, we start you know, importing. So we become an import net country. Tell me, is that how we will grow Kenya's economy? And who has sabotaged the economy? It is not entrepreneurs. They don't have that power. It is those who are in administration. Those who have been elected. Those who are in governance. They are the ones who oversee this kind of activities going on. So, those who have the power to control our economy, they are the ones who have been elected into the position of power. Entrepreneurs will only thrive if you create that enabling environment. But you politicians, especially in Kenya Kwanza, you have made it so much hard for anyone to do business here. That's why it is possible for entrepreneurs to run into other countries where they have good policies, where they have allowed a conducive environment for business to thrive. To do their business. Because their intention and goal is to make profit and have return for their investment. They cannot invest their shilling where they will make a loss. We have contrabands business uh, products here. Goods are here. Contraband. They come in so much cheap. Because you, you have allowed them to come. Then those who are in the business here. Producing. The best. You find out that. The consumer will go for the cheap. Which is contraband. And you are killing. Those who are in a manufacturing. And you are still telling us. That you are growing a Kenyan economy. Those are the kind of policies you come up with. Most of the policies that Kenya Kwanza have come up with. It is 
at interest of serving their desire to make money. And this is a problem when you have people in a position of power who are just entrepreneurs. Look at the policies that Kenya Kwanza have come up with over taxing Kenyans. So, Nini Nyora is addressing who? Is he addressing William Samoy Ruto or Kenyans or entrepreneurs? This message is not for us. It is for William Ruto, Nini Nyoro, the chair of budget and the Kenya Kwanza administration. By the way, Ruto told us that he will change this country. And Nini Nyoro is telling us that politicians will not change the country. It is the entrepreneurs who will change. This is a smart con statement formulating a narrative of defense to look good in eyes of Kenyans. No one should clap for Nini Nyoro when he is issuing this kind of statement. We should not clap for him. They have failed us. Hmm. So, if you look on how Kenya Kwanza is running the affairs, you find out that their main goal is to win an election. Something that Dinyoro is disputing that winning an election should not be the main goal. It should be about governance. But for them, it's all about winning election. Otherwise, if it was not so, then William Ruto will lead by an example by going to Harambe House sit in the office and work for Kenyans. As long as it's much focus on eh, organizing campaign rallies, addressing people on top of vehicle every time, organizing for political eh, events in the name of inter-denomination uh, prayer and thanksgiving services, which is political. He is not working for us. He tells us that his focus is more on a winning election and convincing people that he's working when he's not working. So the message is for no one but Nini Joros boss. That is the truth. I don't know your views, but let us be in the comment section to continue with this discussion. Thank you so much and see you in our next video.